Is this some kind of joke? Oh, Jesus H. Christ. No. Father Bloody Christmas. All right, thank you. <clears throat> it's a common enough mistake, but no, he's my twin brother. I'm Jacob, as in the black sheep, sometimes known as penalty claws. <laughs> it's a family joke. Indeed. Well, tell me then, Mr... Um... Jake will do fine. Jake, yes. Tell me about skeletons. Well, there's not much to tell, really, is there? Good. Then I can get back to bed again, can I? Carol singers. Don't you hate them? There comes a moment when it's time for shepherds to stop watching their flocks by night. Those are the remains of two carol singers, are they? Yeah. What happened? I shot them. How? Through the top of the head. Where? Outside my house, up on the roof. I was practising. I sometimes give my brother a hand, you know. When did all this take place? A few years ago, Christmas time. I can't quite remember the year. And you've kept the bodies hidden ever since, have you? Yeah. Where? In the cupboard? <laughs> no, up the chimney. Oh, up the chimney. I thought as much. Your lot never believed in my brother. So what hope have I got, eh? Uh. No. No? No. Is that no as in no, no, no? Or just as in no? No as in I would rather... Cut my leg off with a lawnmower. No. Oh, please, pretty please. Come on. No! No! Oh, spoil sport. If you're doing a study on women's intuition, then who could possibly be a better subject to study than me? Oh, about the entire female population of London, New York, Tokyo, Amsterdam, Herzegovina. Ooh. Enough. I think you're being unfair, unreasonable, unkind, and unlikely to ever get a dinner invitation from me ever again. If I could use you, I would use you. But answer me one question. Do you consider yourself to be a normal representative of the human race? That's a trick question. It is not.
Still no idea who he is. No, sir. Who are these elves he keeps talking about? Apparently, they work in the grotto. Uh -huh. And he now claims they made him do it. He changed his story with the wind, sir. Oh. How on earth did the press get hold of it so fast? Well, it wasn't one of our boys. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he called them before he turned himself in. They managed to get a picture. Well, we thought it was a forensic expert. No. Yes, well, you better check those bones again. Yes, sir. Well, apart from the obvious holes in the skull, there are a number of smaller ones drilled through just about every single bone, without doubt made after death, the cause of which is really impossible to tell. Can they be dated? Not yet. They are in good condition, but what well, depends on where they were found, conditions they were kept in. Is there anything we can go on? Well, I would need more time. But I would guess that they were both in their 50s. There's a lot of calcification on the ribs. Male and female? Yes. The female has been a mother. Another thing that might interest you is the teeth. Oh, good. Yes, I thought that might be the best chance we'd have of identifying them. Oh, not this time. Dental work is very basic. Last time I saw bridge work like that was in China. Oh, great. Yin and bloody Yang. Oh, by the way, yeah. we do have the remains of three people here. Three? This does not belong to either of those. The answer's still no. Oh, I'm glad you're still considering it. Where are you going? I had a workshop with vegetarian fetishists. I'm going to wash the bulgar and the tofu off my hands. John, darling, I'm back with fresh durians of my new trapeze. Call me. Cornelius, Cornelius, wherefore art thou, Cornelius? <laughs> Where are you? Hello. I'm so sorry, but Dr. Cornelius can't come to the telephone right now. Uh, not that the warts on his wingy wongle are all that debilitating, but the small burns caused by the laser treatment have gone septic, and the specialist recommended lying down to prevent further discharge. If you'd like to leave your name, address, and telephone number, it would help the local medical authorities in tracing all those who've been in contact with Dr. Cornelius during the last six months. Thank you. Doctor, it's me. I'm only allowed to make one call, and this is it. I'm a little mulberry. They're giving me the third degree, and I don't know if I can hold out for much longer. I'm sorry if I sound strange, but I've still got the electrodes on my tongue. Ah! Ah! Give me that. Ah! Give ah! me that! Ah! <laughs> That's funny. Four calls. Only one message. Who was that? Oh, it's one of Dr. Gould's patients. I'm tracking for a research paper. Trouble? I think I heard Cadogan in the background. scores England nil South Georgia four and the main points of the news once again the police are still battled as to the identity of two skeletons handed in by a man claiming to be related to St Nicholas the Prime Minister to send talk talk for Martin Dalma Pulsa Roger there's no such thing as the Scandinavian Secret Service isn't there no pretty good cover though eh Worked in 68 when MI6 dropped me into Prague. Well, Tillamelda Marcos recognised me working in the heel bar. <sighs> the KGB really know how to sweat a man. Not like this bunch of amateurs. 14 months I spent in the Lubyanka, strapped to a polar bear with three legs, and I never even told them I took milk in my tea. You're still working at the petrol pumps, right? Yeah. What? I, um, I didn't hear. Yeah, three days a week. 
Ah, then you could see Dr Gould more often. Oh, cheer up, it's not as bad as all that. Bet you gave them a run for their money, hmm? Yeah. Rupert Murdoch asked me to take charge of... Sorry. Sorry. So, Tuesdays then? No, I can't. The CIA want me to... Yeah. Tuesday should be all right. Pseudo what? Pseudo logic of fantastic. A basically a condition where people lie for no apparent reason or gain. Often bigger the lie, bigger the kick. <laughs> oh, no, that may be difficult for some of you fellows to see as an illness and not as a prerequisite for a job. Well, those levels were good enough in my day. Roger's condition stems from a total lack of self esteem. Traceable to the day his boxing career was well ended. As a behavioural compensation, he's far happier assuming any other identity but his own. Such as? Oh, an expert of some sort, and sometimes he even transcends that, and he can become Marilyn Monroe's son, Hitler's hairdresser, <laughs> Pope's wife. Or Santa Claus's brother. Exactly, yeah. So, Roger is a pseudologue extraordinaire. Yes. Do we know who's been treating this Roger Smith? Yes, I've spoken to the man, and he assures me Roger is completely harmless. I wish we could be so sure. Hello, darling. I have had a beastly day thanks to those spies of yours who insist on following me everywhere. They're not spies, darling heart. They're just there to make sure nobody comes to any harm. Huh. You only need to explode out of that dress of yours and several innocent bystanders could Don't be bystanders. ridiculous. You must trust me. You, yes. Any man between seven and seven hundred, no. Oh, that's silly. No sillier than trusting a pyromaniac in a match factory. He brought these in last night. Hmm. I thought that would surprise you. Any more clever ideas? Well, he didn't mention this to me. Hmm. Would you have believed him if he had? Did he say where he found them? No. Well, the only thing you can charge Roger with is theft. Theft? Hmm. These are display skeletons. Yes, that's the conclusion I've come to. All the little holes are for wiring the bones together. Oh, terrific. Yes, these are probably from a surgery. Hospital ones tend not to be in such good condition, not after the physiotherapists have got hold of them. So we can't even charge him with theft till someone reports them stolen? Unless he coughs. Oh, and I'm sure he will. He'll admit to anything. Great train robbery, sinking of the Belgrano. Someone must be missing them. And until they do, this goes beyond Roger's... W <laughs> well, perhaps not beyond Roger's wildest dreams. He'll milk it for all it's worth. Must you. He'll be sick. No, he won't. Professor, you're one of the leading forensic scientists in the world. I understand, though, that the police are not pursuing these Santa skeletons as a murder inquiry. Well, with all due respect to the police, that'll be up to me to decide once oh, I've finished no. examining the remains. Can you tell us a bit about that? Certainly. I'll be going through both the skeletons piece by piece. We have uh, a saying in our business, give me the bone and I will show you the man. That's incredible. Well, it's pretty small change nowadays. I once reconstructed a murder victim from her lipstick and one eyelash, poor thing. So the Santa skeleton should be fairly straightforward. Yes. Oh, elementary. Walk in the park. A piece of cake for someone who's been in this game as long as I have. And once the reconstruction... Oh, oh, you beast! You beast! You didn't have to kick him! Jeffrey! Yes. Come to Mummy! Jeffrey! Shut up! Shut up! I have the task of putting together the... Can't you see I'm watching this? Shark. By the time I finish with those skeletons, they won't so much talk to me as sing. Is there anything you can tell us about them now? Well, your viewers might be interested to know that they were positioned together in copulae. 
Like that they were, on top of each other, locked. Uh, you could say he was burying his bone. Oh. <laughs> dem bones, dem bones, dem dry bones, dem bones, dem bones, dem dry bones, dem bones, dem bones, dem dry bones. Now hear the word of the Lord. Head bones collecting, backbone and backbone collecting. Although in this case, it's a bit of a shout. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah? I seem to have... Well, there doesn't seem to be any paper. I wonder if you had any to spare. Oh, sure. Well, uh, what do you want me to do with it? Well, you couldn't pass it under, could you? Sure. There you go. Hey, get off. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, I'm sorry to bother you. Is Roger in? He left this in the back of my car. There we go. Six buckets in all. <laughs> You've cleared me out. That should keep you busy for a while anyway, Mr. B. Ta very much. On account, is it? Lovely. Oh, and don't forget to feed the little devils. <laughs> he really wanted to be a boxer, you know. One of a small, busy sort. And he was so good at it, too. That was the tragedy. It was his first fight. I'd sewn Roger on his dressing gown. Well, as much as I had time to, the E and the R I had to put in his pocket. Roger landed a terrific punch in the third round, moved in for the finish, and it was then he saw the blood. He fainted and was counted out. Never lived it down. Broke his heart. Well, I'm sure he's not far. Just round the bend, perhaps. That's where the police suggested he was. Miss Smith, do you... Annie, please. Annie. Do you know where Roger found those two skeletons? Oh, so that's what they were... No, I don't. Well, I knew he was up to something, because he came in with his metal detector looking very excited. Then he rushed out again with that sack. Some cake. No, thank you. The landlord said his bike's still in the car park. I do worry. I know it sounds silly, but a woman knows. She... J she knows. I couldn't agree with you more. Roger's, Roger's missing. missing. Please think it's a joke. Annie's worried and you want us to find him. Oh, and another thing, you hate it when I'm right. No. Oh, they found him? No. I loathe it when you're right. Oh, in case you were wondering... No. Men often have intuition, but they prefer to use the telephone. Annie said you were charming, but you didn't try her cakes. I think I'm going off to Hawaii to see the next full eclipse of the sun. That's not for 150 years. So? Well, it'd be the longest fit of peak in the history of the world, and it won't help us to find Roger. I think he's in trouble. Oh, so you believe Annie's intuition, but not mine? No. I believe that Roger is not at home. I believe that it is unlike his behaviour to stay away. I believe, therefore, that something has happened that is logic, 
Most women think it is an Albanian Christian name. Okay, JC. I'll tell you what. You use your male logic and I'll use my female intuition. And we'll see which works best in finding Roger, shall we? <laughs> hmm. It's got to be a bit of teamwork or something. I mean, look for a diary. Oh, no, we didn't keep one. I thought you'd prefer to have it in here uninterrupted. <coughs> Lovely. This is my special fruitcake, Mr Cornelius, but without the raisins. And the cherries and the sultanas. Well, that's, uh, prunes and, um, apricots. Ah, well, that's just as nice, Annie, just as nice. Well, it's easier to see. <laughs> right, I'll leave you to it, then. Poetic justice. Mm -mm -mm. This is delicious. Isn't this the sack that Roger had? I think so. Oh, it's such a joy to see the master at work. Ho, ho, ho. How long does yoghurt stay fresh? A week, ten days, why? Well, if this was with the skeletons when Roger found them, then they were hidden in July 1980. Well, I think that takes the first set. A fluke. Still doesn't solve anything. Aha! What have you come up with, huh? A great Dane finds some bones, thinks it's his birthday, and he buries them. And then he gets run over by a bus, and they remain hidden until Roger comes along. You know what's worse than a bad loser? A bad winner. Oh, are we conceding defeat already? No, talking out loud. I just don't see what anyone would gain by hiding two skeletons in the first place. Hmm, hiding is an exaggeration where Roger's concerned. Well, then. I have a strong feeling that if we trace them, we'll find Roger. Ooh, a strong feeling, eh? Logic gone out the window now, has it? No. Foot fault, your one breakdown in the second set. My little beauties. Charles and Guy, 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 Charles and Guy. Sounds like they should get married. Oh, look, there's a nice picture of the Queen Mother. Oh, and there they all are on the balcony. Start of an era. Yeah. McEnroe beats Borg at Wimbledon. Oh, you're so... Oh, wait. Yes, 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 yes! Mm. This is it! I know it, I know it, I know it. Look, look. Police are baffled by the disappearance of pianist Peter Mills, 25, and Suzette Sabo, a 23-year-old... Sex bomb. Mm -hmm. Laboratory assistant. Nobody ever says sex bomb. Well, actually, he was a laboratory assistant and she was the pianist. Quite good, apparently. Taught by the same Mrs Mim, who teaches my granddaughter. What was he like? Fair, strong, ordinary. And she? A sex bomb. Are they still missing? Well, the file's still open. But why run away? Peter Mills has been working in one of these beauty clinic places. Lip tuck, lift up? That's the sort. Well, apparently our boy broke into the safe where the clients left their valuables. It was all hushed up at the time. Nobody wanting to report that they were clients? Yes. And you think this might have something to do with your Mr. Roger Smith? 
Well, a laboratory assistant could have access to display skeletons. Well, people often try to fake their own death by leaving clothes at the water's edge, so... So you think, why not go a stage further and leave the remains behind? And if Roger found out they were still alive? <laughs> nice try. I'm sorry I thought Cadogan told you. Roger brought in the remains of three bodies, not two. Now, this hand is totally different. There are no holes in it to join the bones together. That's right. And the rest of the skeletons are complete, as far as I can tell. And probably Chinese. Yeah. What about the hand? Probably no, but I wouldn't like to say. Can we borrow it? What? No, well, I promise to return it. Yes, all right, Doctor. Thank you. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Mmm. Hope so. But I'm amazed that you can still drive the car. No, I'm not thinking about hanging upside down naked from the trapeze covered in overripe durians. Just a wait. Wait a minute. Where did you get that idea from? Nothing. I didn't say anything. It was just a wild guess. My world's a phone. And I bet you've put some sort of a message on it, haven't you? No. Yes, well, maybe I just livened it up a bit, that's all. Well, thank you for telling me that Joy rang. Joy, most apt, I'm sure. Joy happens to be infatuated with an acrobatic greengrocer from Chiang Mai. Oh. I'm sorry, John, I apologise, I was wrong. I've made a complete fool of myself. Please forgive me. Oh, you sound like my father. I'd rather sound like Pinky and Perky. Pinky's missing. Healed over. Homo sapiens. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Professor, is there anything else you can tell us? What would you like to know? Anything. As a rule, paleoanthropologists aren't used to working on anything this live. <laughs> she finds out he's a thief and plans to turn him in. She pleads with him, but no. He's built up a resentment against the rich people he's robbed. They row. He hits her. She falls and bangs her head. He panics and makes it look like a double disappearance. Perfect. Except that she is probably the skeleton of a Chinese rice planter. Oh, you can be so obstructive. Well, all right. Let's forget it. After all, it's only a small thing. I'm sure we can think up a reason to overlook it. I'm not interested in reasons. Intuition's about knowing. And I just know that hand belongs to the missing girl. Ah, oh, that has been interesting. When Roger appeared on television and said he was going through the skeletons bone by bone, well... The murderer panicked. The length of the hand corresponds with the length of the arm, from which the overall height can be estimated. Uh, uh, five, five foot, foot seven? Approximately, yes. Very good. Well done. Suzette's height. Match point. Told you I had a highly developed sixth sense. Well, it makes up for the other five that don't work. How could Suzette play the piano properly with only nine fingers?
could learn to play the piano instead. No, no, I don't think that would be very wise. Uh, no, I should just give it a rest for today. It's coming, you know, it's coming. Yes, you're doing fine, fine. I think I'll go and make us both a cup of chamomile tea. Yes, that's what I'll do. Hello, Roger. You've caused me no end of trouble. Studied by that charlatan Cornelius. Investigated by Miss Valentine. You've some very interesting friends for a mere petrol pump attendant. Mm -hmm. But your dreams have caught up with you here, Roger. I have the skills to turn you into anyone you can think of. Mm -hmm. How about Boris Karloff? Mm -hmm. Bernard Manning? Mm -hmm. No better still. Jane Mansfield. Ah. Should be sitting in a cave. But I'm sure this will do. I thought druids lived in trees. Well, that's tree druids. This is a different branch. Cave druids did this. They pioneered a technique for finding answers where answers were few and making sense of the nonsensical. But in our case... Jolly Roger. The druids felt that by bringing the four principal elements, earth, wind, water, fire, together, awareness could be heightened to a level unobtainable through fasting, penitence... Meditation alone. Symbolically, we have water, fire, earth. It's the inside of the cave. Wind? Traditionally, a cream-skinned acorn gatherer would blow gently back and forth across the eyelids of the chief druid. But in our case, necessity dictates... Yes, it was very hard, emotionally, to give up one's hopes and aspirations and channel them through other people. But I... C'est la vie. How would you describe Suzette? Honestly? Yes. She's what people call a sex bomb. And as a pianist? Oh, good. Surprisingly good. But not concert stage material. But her looks and talent. When I think of her and see Richard Clayderman, I have to shed a little tear. What a tragedy. Yes. Well, even Liszt couldn't play Liszt with only nine fingers. What? Yes, yeah, she lost a finger. The little one. She said it was an accident, but I think her boyfriend cut it off. Deliberately accused her of seeing another man. Did he work in a beauty clinic? Yes. Uh, no, that's misleading. He works there, but he also owns it. Owns it? He's still alive? Oh, yes. He was here this morning. He brought his wife for her singing lesson. Mills? Who's Mills? Would be in his 30s, a stocky, blonde, uh, Peter Mills. The one she ran away with? Yes. No, no, I remember him, but I never met him. No, I meant her regular boyfriend, Mr Bingham. Harold B. Bingham. 
a nipper and tucker. Bingham's a jealous man, right? Right. A man who cuts off his girlfriend's finger because he suspects she's having an affair. Hmm. What would he do if he found out she were actually having an affair? Cut off a whole lot more besides. Her hand. Why put it with two skeletons? And where is she now? And Peter Mills? And Roger. I think Roger's in there. Only one way to find out. Correction, I've just thought of another. What? That must be sex bomb number two. So? I think I'll just go and ask her dog a couple of questions. Nothing too intimate. After all, I've got a lecture in 20 minutes. Well, I'm going to get in there on my own, then. How? Make an appointment. I could pretend I want a bottom like Felicity Kendall's. No. No, definitely not. How about Annika Rice's? Hello. I was wondering if I could make an urgent appointment to see Dr Bingham. I'm sorry, but he's fully booked. Look, this is an emergency. It's... it's... Oh, dear. I'm prepared to wait. Well, I suppose if somebody cancels... No, no, Mr Needham. If I could enlarge that, I'd be a very, very rich man. Yes. Goodbye, then. Ah, oh, Miss Cornelius. Sorry to keep you waiting. Now I understand you have a tattoo you wish removing. Yes, but I'm afraid it is awfully rude and so embarrassing. May I take a look at it? Oh, no. Miss Cornelius, I do need to see the to-do before I can advise you on the best course of action. Oh, dear. This is terribly difficult. You see, the tattoo is... Uh, it's on... Uh, yes? It's on my boyfriend. <laughs> eh? Yes, and I can't fail to see it every time... every time we go swimming. It's my birthday, and my boyfriend promised me I could have anything I want, and I want to have it removed. Is that possible? I mean, no one will ever know. No one will ever be able to read it again, will they? Don't you worry. You just bring your boyfriend in and I promise you these will be the last eyes ever to see it. Oh, that's such a relief. Now, if you care to come this way, I'll show you some examples of just how successful our treatment can be. Most hospitals have a list of what they call the munch punch. They're sufferers of Munchausen syndrome. They're people who feign illness in order to obtain treatment, even operations, and they can be extremely hard to sort out, especially if they change places with somebody with a legitimate condition. Hospital notes do not contain a picture of the patient and... <gasps> you fool, Cornelius. <laughs> Amanda, isn't it? Quick, into my study and take off all your clothes. <laughs> now it's a matter of <laughs> life and death. The <laughs> Arthur, will you go to the zoology department and get me half a dozen live cockroaches? A bomb, a torch. I don't know where from. Impossible. It's impossible. Come, come, Miss Albright. Surely a busy person like yourself sneaks the odd sandwich in here instead of taking lunch. Hmm? Oh, do take a seat. Mr. Bingham will be with you in a minute. I'll start at the top of the house and work my way down, shall I?
minute, just a minute. It's him, Bingham, and I know how he did it. He murdered them both. He's... When did the police get here? <gasps> Hurry up. <laughs> Miss Valentine's still here. Good. Because your boyfriend's just popped in to have his tattoo removed. <laughs> Hello? Yeah? What? Good heavens. Who's this speaking? Roger! No, no, no. Let me guess. You've been kidnapped by the Smurfs. And you've escaped disguised as Mother Goose. No, Dolly Parton. Really, Mr Cornelius? You didn't expect me to fall for your tricks twice, did you? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I did. And you see those handcuffs on the wall? Kindly put them on. Uh, oh, oh, my pleasure. Thank you. You cold-bloodedly murdered Suzette Sabo and Peter Mills. Maybe. They're hanging in your examination room, picked clean by maggots. Yes, they do like a spot of fresh food when they can get it. You already had two legitimate skeletons, so you just swapped them over. Precisely. Jealousy. And it didn't even matter if they were found. They couldn't be traced to you. You even robbed your own safe to frame poor Mills. Neat. Except that you'd already cut off Suzette's finger. Yes, I should have kept it. Mistake? Hmm. I had to swap hands. That day, dreaming idiot gave me quite a scare. But I'll get it right this time. After I practiced a few new surgical techniques on you two. You don't think I'd be foolish enough to come here without telling the police first, do you? Yes, I do. Ah! You only delayed the inevitable by a matter of ah! Hang on, Roger. I have seen Liston. I have seen Sugar Ray Leonard, Ali, but I have never, never seen anything like Roger, Lightning Fist Smith, the Nine Stone Pogo. Seconds out! Round six! I've got a bone to pick with you. Yes. 
guess it's them. Hello. Hello. Well, how are things? Fine, fine. I've been offered a job at the library. I'd have preferred something a bit quieter, really, but I said I'd give it a go. Good. Well, I don't think you need to see Dr Gould anymore. Yeah, oh. well, thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. I made you some currant buns. I hope you don't mind. I couldn't get currants, so do be careful, cos the dates have still got stones in. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Do you think I'll get married? Well, I solved it. You? Yes. By using female intuition? No, by female logic. No, I solved it using male intuition. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. There's no such thing. Is. Isn't. Is. Annika Rice, huh?